Hello and welcome everyone to this uh, series of uh, conversations that we are doing with youth change makers across countries of the Asia Pacific, people who are working on the ground in their communities uh, and doing innovative initiatives on raising awareness around sexual and reproductive health and rights. And we are doing this ahead of the Asia Youth Festival happening in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia later this month that is being hosted by Arrow. With us today is Leanne Campbell, who works in Philippines and much of their work uh, in this project has been around uh, uh, the issue of uh, rising adolescent pregnancies and what can be done around it. So welcome Leanne and please tell us a bit about your project. So I'm Leanne Campbell from YAS or Young Advocates for Sexual Reproductive Health and Rights from Philippines. So our project is entitled Batang Ina, so a youth-led campaign on Philippines Adolescent Pregnancy, which is granted by ARO and supported by WGNR. So in this said project, we focus as or our main goal is to inform the public on the current battle against the rising number of adolescent pregnancy on teenagers at the early age because also of some factors including the COVID-19 pandemic. So the campaign highlights the role of the youth on creating um, a safe space for everyone and to create a meaningful conversation on combating adolescent pregnancy and educating the girls and women on how we can prevent this kind of problem. So also we believe that the first step to battle um, this kind of issue or conflict is to spread information on some platforms that will serve its purpose and to create a safe space for um, young people's voices and actions for their sexual reproductive health and rights. Great. So tell us a bit about, uh, you know, how you worked with your community. So for this program, we able to conduct it by uh, online because it is not possible to conduct it by a face-to-face since of the um, COVID-19 restrictions. So we able to have a webinar series which is implemented um, during May until August 2022. So we select on 70 plus young leaders and participants to be involved in this webinar series in which they are being um, taught about the um, some services, the situation of the rising numbers of teenage pregnancy in the Philippines, and also the creative means or um, the creative techniques that they can able to use in spreading the information in the social media. Great. So essentially, it was entirely online based, right? So the training is happening online and then the people are, you know, raising awareness using social media, right? Yes. Excellent. Great. So what would you say has been, uh, you know, the impact of this? And are you happy with the way it's gone? <clears throat> So at the end of the webinar series, we tell them to create their own strategy or technique on how they can able to spread what they learn about the whole implementation of the program. So they able to come up with some poems, essays, short stories, or narratives telling about the or telling about how we can prevent and how we can be aware about this teenage pregnancy issue. So therefore then uh, the main thing has been, it's not really clear to me actually, you know, so if your idea is to raise awareness or prevent, uh, you know, what kind of information are you giving these 70 people and what kind of information do you expect them to put out in their social media? How does it help the community and other, you know, teenagers? So mostly the contents of their um, narratives or some sort of creative strategies is all about the comprehensive sexual education, the um, 
sexual reproductive services like the contraceptions that the youth much shall be involved and they must have the access about it. So, uh, if you can just explain a bit about the issue, because, you know, we are really not too clear about, you know, what really is the problem and uh, when you're saying, you know, rising uh, adolescent pregnancies, why is the problem so big? First, if you could just, you know, tell us, put the context for us that, you know, why is it such a big problem in Philippines? So, it is um, a big problem because the youths that have been pregnant is ages between 10 to 16 years old, which is very crucial at their health because we know that being pregnant at the young age can give us complications. So they are not aware that they will get this risk about getting pregnant. So we want to educate them, the young people, and also the young leaders in the Philippines about this kind of issue and how could they help to prevent this, to combat also. Right. So you're saying that the teenagers are not aware of the risks that are involved. So what about services and access to services? Do they have access to family planning services? So during the webinar series, we able to, to discuss about the first the PH adolescent pregnancy situation or the, um, the primer, I think. And then the programs and the community and clinical services that can evolve to access free because of the local government unit. Because maybe some adolescents are not being informed about this free access, but they can have it. So that's, that's the case. Right, right. So what has been, uh, uh, I mean, generally, if you can talk a bit about, uh, uh, you know, community response or, uh, you know, like, what does society think about this? About the problem of uh, teenage pregnancy? Because here in the Philippines, we all know that it is so religious. So these kinds of issues are not being resolved by the government because they think that it is not the one that shall be the um i think um the government doesn't intend to give funds on this kind of issues because it is like um less less neglected yeah because they want, because yeah, the Filipinos are like being taught also in the school with comprehensive sexual education because it is also integrated in the curriculum. But the problem is the teenagers or the young people um, doesn't intend to integrate or to properly learn this, this lectures or discussions. Excellent, great. So, so, so Lian, you work on your own or do you work with an organization? How do you work when you work on this issue? So since YAS is a organization in which um, we are a group of young people, which is based on different provinces in the Philippines. So we only work via online through Zoom. But okay. we also have um, capacity building last July, which we conducted face-to-face -face in Manila. Right. So uh, you work entirely online, right? Yes. And uh, so what kind of, you know, problems, issues, challenges do you find when you're working online? Um, one of the problems that we always yeah, face or encounter during working online is the internet connectivity because in the Philippines it is unstable. When it rains, <laughs> the signal will get poorer. So it is hard also to work on that because we can prevent 
these kinds of difficulties. Right. So uh, the COVID-19 pandemic would have impacted, uh, you know, lack of services as well for young girls and would have, you know, this whole problem, you know, how did the pandemic affect the issue of uh, rise in, uh, you know, teenage pregnancy? So we think that it is, um, the COVID-19 pandemic is also one of the factors that affects about this issue of teenage pregnancy because um, during the COVID-19, we all know that all of us are being stayed at home and the teenagers doesn't also go outside and they do this um, um, sexual intercourse or sort of without protection because they don't have the access about the contraception so they can able to buy or go to the local government units because um, of COVID-19 restrictions in the mobility. Excellent. Right, right. True. Great. So tell me a bit about the kind of support you got from Arrow while building your project. So in Arrow, we, we our organization got a seed grant worth of $2,500. No, no, I just meant how do you, how, how, what kind of mentoring, what kind of support did you get to put your project together? So, um, I think we have, last year, the Arrow conducted this cohort program about the youth organizations and luckily our organization are also been picked to be one of the participants or to engage to be involved in this kind of program so this in this program we cultivate this kind of project which is the batang ina youth led campaign of on philippines adolescent program so um also in that um, program. It is a series of webinar in Arrow. Um, we are also taught about the strategies, the mechanisms, and also um, how we can make the project sustainable. Excellent. Great. So, uh, Leah, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, like when we talk about rising pregnancy rate among adults, and so much of the attention is focused on women and girls, right? But what about the boys? And is there any kind of, uh, you know, information reaching out to the men and boys to engage them in this issue? Um, um, the participants for our webinar series on this program is 70 plus young leaders and participants, which is combined of girls, um, adult men, and also um, younger girls. Yeah. Okay. So okay. they are being involved too. Yes, yes. Because when I was looking at the information, I was kind of wondering that, uh, and also I was reading up and it, it said that in most cases, you know, where we have adolescent pregnancies, you know, the partner is usually a much older person. Is that true? Wait, pardon, what's the question? No, I, I was just reading in one of the studies and it said that in most cases of adolescent pregnancy, the partner, the father of the child is usually a much older person and not really a person of the same age. Um, In the Philippines, it is, I think, it is diverse. It is diverse. Um, yeah. Great. And uh, so, uh, you know, what are the, when adolescent pregnancy happens, you know, what kind of other problems will it lead to? So, for example, you know, I mean, will it lead to more poverty? Will it lead to school dropout and things like that? Um, I think because... Um, the teenagers here in the Philippines are not um, often about this kinds of discussion. So they just love about these kinds of matters and they don't take it seriously. So they are not 
being aware about the proper informations. Also, even though the curriculum of the Philippines, we have also integrated the ano, comprehensive sexual education. Um, they still not able to grasp those kinds of information so that it and eventually that the rising numbers of the adolescent pregnancy here is continually rising. So in this kind of matter, we want to reduce it by informing some young leaders and participants to engage in social media platforms about so, our advocacy. Right, right. So just curious, so these people whom you've trained will put out their poems and, you know, whatever info they want on their social media. So how do you know whether the project has worked, whether it's successful or not? Um, because we have also the Facebook page uh, and we also post some infographics, publication materials about this kinds of about this kinds of issue, and also we will to get the outputs of our participants, and we post it. And when we post those kinds of um, IECs or communication materials, um, we able to see that the engagements, youth engagements on our page become rise or it actually increase. Wonderful, wonderful, great, great. Very nice, uh, excellent to uh, you know, know about the work that you're doing, Leanne. Thank you so much for sharing and congratulations and best wishes as you go forward. For everyone else who's listening in, uh, this is a series of video conversations that we are doing with youth change makers across countries of the Asia Pacific. And we were just hearing from Leanne who spoke about their work on addressing uh, adolescent pregnancy in the Philippines. Uh, this is uh, These conversations that we are doing is ahead of the regional youth festival being held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia later this month, hosted by Arrow. And if you'd like to know more about this festival, uh, please do uh, look at the Arrow website. Thank you for watching and bye for now.